Okay. Good afternoon. On behalf of the officers and members of Alpha of Florida Phi Beta Kappa, I welcome you to this initiation of the newly elected members of our society. Will your audience please stand while the guide, Dr. Sarah Ayerly, leads the initiates to their seats. And please remain standing until all are in their seats. <laughs> Music, please. Thank you. Keep the music on, please. Thank you and welcome and you may be seated. My name is Dr. Annalisa Lysifer and I serve as the Alpha Florida chapter president now for 13th year. If you're wondering about the accent, although I have lived here in Tallahassee for many decades, I'm originally from Copenhagen, Denmark, and I know there's supposed to be somebody here today, Freeborg, who's from Denmark, a student and a parent. Thank you. Since I announced everybody's field of study, although my PhD is in French literature, it's actually Moliere in Denmark, French theater in Denmark. Now welcome to our fellow members of Phi Beta Kappa, to our FSU Provost, Dr. James C. Clark, and the Vice President, oh, Dr. Janet Kistner couldn't come here in the last minute, she was going to, and to our student initiates, parents, and friends. I want to bid a special welcome to the many parents and grandparents, siblings, spouses, and friends, many having traveled far with us today, and somebody I know has come as a surprise to their student. But your very presence, you're showing the, the initiates how important today is in the lives of these terrific students. I also want to give special thank you to Jimmy Cole, the Director of University Relations, as well as to Kevin Olson, the University and, and Presidential Events Manager, as well as his supervisor, Chantel Fuller, for being instrumental in helping to plan today's ceremony to make it a success, including arranging for the ceremony to be live streamed at unirail.fsu.edu, in case you didn't get it before. To follow the green initiative, there are no programs handed out. 
However, you can go to our local website, pbk.fsu.edu, that's been kept up to date by our student webmaster, Eva Zemmert for Media Communication Studies, even if she actually graduated in December. There you can see the names of the initiates and read more, read more about the history of our chapter that you'll hear here today. We're all at the head table, we'll be int introduced during the ceremony. We must also thank the, the second guides, our membership chair, Dr. George Weaver, retired professor of psychology, as well as associate dean of arts and sciences, assisted by Dr. Annette Schwab from public health and sociology. They helped to alphabetize you out there. She's the former director of the honors program. Dr. Weaver and Dr. Schwab have remained in the back to see any late arriving initiates. And I think you can just come up here <laughs> in the first group. We must also thank Dr. Bill Landing, retired professor of oceanography in EOS, and Dr. Nancy de Grumman, professor of classics, for helping with the ceremony. They both serve as acceptance chairs to help encourage students to join Phi Beta Kappa. Two of our student board members met you at the signing and table. I think they all four met you. They are our student secretary, Harrison Betts, from International Affairs in Spanish, and our student event coordinator from Computer Science and Itali Italian, Alibi Sauer. All the head, at the head table were introduced at the ceremony progresses. To provide a fuller context for today's initiation, two of our student officers will recount the founding of the National Phi Beta Kappa chapter and the founding of the Alpha Chapter of the Florida State College for Women, our mother institution. It's important to emphasize that the FSU chapter is unique in that there's only a handful of, out of the 293 Phi Beta Kappa chapters in the nation with student involvement. Our students join the faculty board and also have their own activities. And our student president, Andrea Lopez, will tell us a little bit about the chapter about the student chapter. As will be seen later on the program, the students designed their own faculty award beginning in 2010. In reading first, to, reading first today is Andrea Lopez, our student president from linguistics and editing, writing and media, and AJ Egan, our student vice president from biological science. Andrea. Hi, my name is Andrea, um, as Annalise already introduced you to. Um, I will be reading the founding of the national chapter. Lower. Nice. On December 5th, 1776, a group of young men, students at the College of William and Mary, met in the Apollo Room of the Raleigh Tavern in Williamsburg, Virginia, and founded the Phi Beta Kappa Honor Society. The Phi Beta Kappa Handbook includes a history of the early days of the society in Virginia. A chapter was subsequently established at Yale in 1780 and at Harvard in 1781. Chapters were soon founded at Dartmouth in 1787, Union College in 1817, Boyden in 1825, and Brown in 1830. The society was opened to women in 1875, and the National United Chapters of Phi Beta Kappa was chartered in 1883. Today, 293 chapters have been established across the United States. Initially, the society was a secret order. Following the anti-Masonic -mas I'm sorry, agitations of the 1830s, however, most chapters repealed their secrecy injunctions. The celebrated Phi Beta Kappa Key, the model for membership, keys in most of the national honor societies founded after Phi Beta Kappa, is substantially the same key designed by the original William and Mary chapter. The three stars in the upper left corner of the key symbolize friendship, morality, and literature. The pointing hand in the lower right corner represents aspiration. The letters Phi Beta Kappa stand for the Greek phrase, philosophai bios kubernetes, the philosophy, the helmsman of life. On the reverse side of the medal, the letters SP stand for the second motto of Phi Beta Kappa, Societas Philosophae, Society of Philosophy. Members greeted each other by drawing the backs of the index finger and the middle fingers of the right hand across the lips from the left to the right, affirming that their lips were sealed. They also offered a handshake extending the same two fingers.
All right, so the founding of Florida State College for Women chapter of Phi Beta Kappa. Only academically rigorous institutions offering strong liberal art curricula, maintaining extensive library holdings, and staffed by nationally recognized faculty are eligible to apply for chapters of Phi Beta Kappa. In 1926, 10 faculty members of the Florida State College for Women our predecessor institution began to compile the necessary academic documentation for submission to the national office. By the way, the Florida State College for Women was recognized at the time as one of the top three women's teachers colleges in the United States. Meanwhile, a group of faculty 145 miles southeast of here, the University of Florida, had started their own campaign to chapter the first Phi Beta Kappa, Kappa chapter in the state. Yet, on September 11th, 1934, the charter for Alpha of Florida Phi Beta Kappa was granted by the national office to our own uh, Florida State College for Women, and the first class of new members was initiated in 1935. Beta of Florida, Phi Beta Kappa, was, estab was established in Gainesville in 1938, three years later. So at each of FSU's Phi Beta Kappa initiations, we honor an achievement that will stand for eternity. FSU will forever remain three years ahead of UF in this nationally certified, highly prestigious academic competition. Several of the buildings on the Florida State University's campus have been named to honor the faculty who helped found our Alpha of Florida chapter. You might have heard Smith, Rogers, Richards, and Dorman Halls. Furthermore, an initiate class from the class of 1936, Alpha of Florida, Professor Emeris, and honorary doctor of chemistry, Catherine Hoffman, served as an officer and active member for our chapter in over six decades. The Hoffman Teaching Laboratory of Chemistry is named for our beloved Kitty Hoffman. Doctor, sadly, Dr. Hoffman passed away two weeks before her 106th birthday during, during the summer of 2020. Although unable to attend the last several years, her mind remained brilliant until the very end. Thanks, thanks, AJ. We would normally now hear from our guest speaker due to the fact that our marriage Joel Hare well, has, might have to go teach and might have to leave early. Uh, Dr. Fred Hoff, a professor of statistics and our encouragement of scholarship chair, will make the presentation at this point. Jewel Hay Award recognizes the most outstanding Phi Beta Kappa member graduating from FSU this semester. Marion Jewel Hay was an FSU professor from 1929 to 1967 and a longtime member of our Phi Beta Kappa chapter. To be nominated for this award, a student must not only show academic excellence by graduating summa cum laude, he or she must also demonstrate outstanding achievement in creative scholarly activity or research, supported by a strong letter of nomination from faculty in the student's major department. It is with great pleasure that we honor Chloe Wayne as the recipient of the Marion Jewel Hay Award. Please come forward. <laughs> Chloe is triple majoring in political science, economics, and English with a humanities minor. In addition to achieving a superb academic record in all three of her majors, she has been very active in research, service, and leadership throughout her years at FSU. In describing Chloe's accomplishments, I will be quoting from the letter written by Professor Brad Gomez, chair of the political science department who nominated Chloe for this award. Chloe has been engaged in significant research endeavors while at FSU. As an intern with the Devo Moore Center in the College of Social Sciences and Public Policy, Chloe conducted legal research on the issue of eminent domain in the state of Florida, 
and published op-eds and public policy briefs on the topic. As a UROP scholar, and later for her honors in the major thesis, she did additional research on the topic of eminent domain, analyzing unjust compensation practices by the city of Tallahassee and conducting intakes of displaced residents in historically low-income black neighborhoods. Her research on this topic was presented at the university's undergraduate research symposium, the Florida Undergraduate Research Conference, the Maxi Humanities Symposium at Johns Hopkins University, and the annual meeting of the Association of Private Enterprise Education in Las Vegas, from which she returned last night. Uh, beyond her academic accomplishments, Chloe's commitment to public services and advocacy is truly inspiring. In the summer of 2023, she served as an intern investigator at the Public Defender Services for the District of Columbia, which provides and promotes high quality pro bono legal representation and zealous advocacy to indigent defendants facing a loss of rights and liberties. She earlier served as an investigative intern for the Leon County Public Defender's Office and currently volunteers with the Center for the Advancement of Human Rights at the College of Law. Through her involvement with these organizations, she has demonstrated a deep commitment to justice and social equity. Upon graduation, Chloe plans to earn her Juris Doctorate specializing in social justice and human rights as she pursues her dream to become a public defender, advocating for mitigating social inequalities within the criminal justice system. Chloe, congratulations. We wish you all the best in your career and look forward to hearing about your future work. Please accept this certificate and check from Phi Beta Kappa Alpha Chapter of Florida in recognition of your outstanding academic achievement and excellence in research. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Hoffer, and congratulations, Chloe, for being awarded this well-deserved honor. It never ceases to amaze me how much our students accomplish here at FSU. We all wish you well in your future studies. We'll now hear from our guest speaker. Introducing the guest speaker is our Phi Beta Kappa Vice President, Dr. Court Peeler, Professor of History and Director of the Institute of World War II and the Human Experience. Well, we, we are honored today to have Dr. James Clark, uh, who is Provost Executive Vice President of Florida State University, to address us. Uh, Dr. Clark is a graduate of Siena College. He went on to earn a Master's of Social Work from the University of Kentucky's College of Social Work, and then a doctorate from the University of Chicago. Before embarking on a career in the academy, Dr. Clark was a, a practicing clinician, and from 1984 to 1988, he headed, headed Catholic Social Services Bureau in Lexington, Kentucky. Prior to coming to Florida State University, he served for three years as director of the School of Social Work at the University of Cincinnati, as well as Associate Director for Research and, facu and a faculty member at the University of Kentucky from 1991 to 2012. While at the University of Kentucky, he founded the Center on Trauma and Children, a nationally recognized clinical research center. He has published extensively in the areas of evidence-based evidence behavioral health, forensic, me forensic mental health, child and adolescent trauma, traumatic stress, criminal justice, ethics and accountability, and psychobiography. In, 19, in, in 2015, Dr. Clark joined the faculty uh, of Florida State University as a full professor and was named Dean of the College of Social Work at Florida State. In 2021, he accepted the position of Provost and Executive Vice President of Florida State. We're very, we're very privileged and honored to have him speak to, to us today.
Good evening, everyone. Let's see, me see some more smiles. This is a solemn but a very, very happy occasion to celebrate the accomplishments of these young people. Good afternoon, parents, family members, and friends, and most importantly, our initiates. Congratulations on this extraordinary accomplishment. Today, we celebrate your induction into Phi Beta Kappa, an honor society with a long tradition of hosting distinguished speakers. The best known, Ralph Waldo Emerson, delivered his American Scholar Address at Harvard in 1937. This groundbreaking speech for Phi Beta Kappa became known as the Intellectual Declaration of Independence. It took him an hour and a half to deliver it. I know I will not be as eloquent as Ralph Waldo Emerson, and I promise you I will not be that long. <laughs> but I do have a few thoughts I would like to share to celebrate your accomplishments. Being selected for membership in Phi Beta Kappa is a rare honor and a testament to your hard work and dedication. For 248 years, Phi Beta Kappa members have embraced the pursuit of a liberal education and intellectual fellowship. They've included presidents, Supreme Court justices, Nobel laureates, artists, athletes, diplomats, scientists, innovators, and business leaders, and now you have joined this elite group. Your Phi Beta Kappa key not only symbolizes your achievements and excellence, it also stands as a point of pride for Florida State University. Only 10% of colleges and universities have Phi Beta Kappa chapters, and these chapters select only 10% of their arts and sciences graduates to join. So your induction today is indeed a rare honor. FSU is built on a strong liberal arts tradition that seeks to instill a love of learning. That's why, as we heard in the history presented at the beginning of this program, it's so appropriate that we are home to Florida's very first chapter of Phi Beta Kappa. The 10 Florida State College for Women faculty members who fought hard to earn this chapter did so because they knew that the college exemplified Phi Beta Kappa's strict criteria. And they knew that FSCUW students were deserving of the opportunity to be recognized by this prestigious honor society. Since 1935, when our first students were initiated into Phi Beta Kappa, this institution has grown from a small liberal arts college of 1,700 students to a major public research university of about 44,000 students. Our standards of excellence remain, and now as one of the top public universities in America, the academic quality of our students is better than ever. As Phi Beta Kappa initiatives, initiatives, you represent the very best of FSU. That's because Phi Beta Kappa is about more than just good grades. It's about demonstrating intellectual integrity and advocating for freedom of thought. And it's about collegiality and developing good moral character. That's why the Phi Beta Kappa key has three stars engraved on it, representing the principles of friendship, morality, and learning. I think those principles represent FSU's values as well. We value each member of our university, and we're committed to, bu to building a more inclusive community where everyone feels welcomed and respected and are open to robust discourse. While here, I hope you've had the opportunity to learn about other people and cultures and have perhaps expanded your social circle to include those who hold different life experiences or views that are different from your own. These friendships are some of the most important you may ever have. We've also created the kind of environment at FSU that has hopefully allowed you to become a better person. Morality is more than knowing what's right or wrong. It's about acting on your beliefs. So many of you do that every day by volunteering in the community, serving in leadership roles at the university, and engaging in research that will improve people's lives. The final star on the key represents learning. In the American Scholar, the address I mentioned at the beginning 
of my remarks, Emerson noted that, quote, the one thing in the world of value is the active soul, close quote. I believe he meant that knowledge is not just something you gain from reading a book or sitting in a classroom. It is not a passive activity in which you learn what everybody already knows. It's about experiencing life, generating new ideas, creating new works, and advancing our society. We embrace that philosophy at FSU by encouraging experiential learning, intellectual debate, creative endeavors, and unfettered scientific inquiry. As you embark on this new chapter of your life's journey, I hope you'll always engage your active souls and draw inspiration from Phi Beta Kappa's motto, love of learning is the guide of life. As you navigate the challenges and triumphs of the road ahead, remember that. Love of learning is the guide of life. If you do this and live by the core values of Phi Beta Kappa, friendship, morality, and learning, I believe you will have a joyful and fulfilling life and you'll make the world a better place. And frankly, the world needs you right now. As Emerson said, genius always looks forward. You have extraordinary potential to be the transformational letters, le leaders of your generation, and we're depending on you to show us the way. If that sounds like a lot to ask, it's because your FSU family knows that you are capable of tremendous success. Congratulations, and may your love of learning continue to illuminate your path and inspire those around you. Go Knowles. Thank you, Dr. Clark, and thank you so very much for being part of hosting today's initiation and reception, which is being held directly after the ceremony here in Miller Hall. For that, we thank you and thank University of Relations so very much. Now, initiation of the new members will our guide, Dr. Sarah Ayali, Professor of Musicology and Associate Dean for Research and Faculty Development in the College of Music, please come forward to present the newly elected members to the audience. something else. I'm just going to stay up here. Will the candidates for initiation into Alpha of Florida, Phi Beta Kappa, please rise. Okay. Madam President, I have the honor of presenting these candidates for initiation. In accordance with the rules of this chapter and in consequence of our good opinion of your high intellectual achievement and strong moral character, Alpha of Florida has selected you as worthy of initiation. By the rules of the chapter, each initiate must pledge allegiance to the society and accept, and except for those initiated in absentia, must sign the roll book. Do you promise to be true and faithful to the society and to help elect future members of a society who will also demonstrate high intellectual achievement and moral character? Please respond in unison by saying, I do. I do. You may be seated. And Dr. Clark, would you please come forward and stand in front of here to greet the students when they come. And when the guide calls your name, please come forward to the lectern over there on your right. Well, actually, first, go, up, go over and get, duck, get your honor cords. Uh, but I'll tell you, you'll, after you get the cords, you'll, then you will go to the lectern and sign the roll book, which dates back to our first initiation in 1935. You'll be greeted by our two encouragement chairs, Dr. Bill Landing and Dr. Nancy de Grumman, who will place your honor cords around your necks. You will then, and then you sign the book. You will then receive your certificate with Dr. Brian Chase, Professor of Biological Science and Alpha Florida Corresponding Secretary, helped by Dr. Kurt Peeler, the Vice Beta Kappa Vice President from History. 
And after receiving your certificate, so you start going one by one over there. After receiving your certificate, please shake hands with Dr. Clark or just greet him as you prefer. And then please return to your seats by entering from the other side of the row. The few remaining certificates to be ordered next week should be in the University Relations on the second floor of Westcott, hopefully by midweek. I'm actually heading off to Europe uh, next week, so I'll be back on the 28th. Um, I'll notify you when they arrive, if need be, mail them to your home addresses. An important point before we continue, we must thank the university for providing the honor course for all the initiates. I know how important they are to all of you. And if any initiate arrived afterwards, I believe they are already here. We began the induction ceremony. Please raise your hand and come forward. That's afterwards. Yeah, I think you're all here, just, just continue. Okay, oh great. Is there anybody else who has a card? No, okay. All right. Okay, please come forward when I call your name. Thank you. Jason Bakshi. Nathaniel Bridoff. Kat Cox. Gisela David. Kendall Duty. Peter Etz. Rhea Hughes. Lindsay James. Valerie Johnstone. Anna Kaspersky. Delaney Lento. Miranda Matthews. Madeline McNally. You are not an alpha order for me. Entire alpha order item because I'm seeing seniors coming in. Isabella Menendez. No, we're, we're juniors and then seniors. Well, they're seated this way, so we're going to have to come. Yeah. Lauren Moore. Frederick Raftus. Emma Robbins. I will tell you they're all there, so. Haley Shermer. Isabel Sevilla. Garrett Sykes. Ian Turner. Matilda Varine. Daniel Watson. Diella Webster. Sarah Ansar. Tobiloba Arabuola Zachary Ashcraft Jason Ashkenazi Carnegie Lucas Bosch Melody Burridge. Jackson Carpenter. Indrival Kamba. Chantal Chance. Congratulations. 
Lily Childers. Kaylee Clark. Emily Dorgan. Bryce Etheridge. James Fair. Kirk Fector. Rachel Frank. Rebecca Freiborg. Meredith Glan. Devin Glicken. Laredin Heller. Alexander Horak. Nina Kimmelman. Alexis McIntosh. Hannah Musiak. Shane McCord. Eli Polinski. Isabella Reddish. Natalie Rubio. Ryan Schroy. Daniela Vergara. Shana Vogel. James Woolard. Jingwen Su.
I, they were planned to be in total alpha order, so something good. That's, so if you didn't, if you didn't find it, they're here unless you picked them up. A few of you picked them up earlier at the University of Relations, and there were three that just registered. So if you didn't find it, come up after the ceremony, please, and, and we'll look for them. Make sure you get them. So, all right. So now we'll, pre we'll present the 2024 Phi Beta Kappa Excellence in Teaching Award. In making the presentations today are our Student Sec Secretary Harrison Betts and Student Event Coordinator Libby Sauer. And this award was developed and designed by the students when we first began having students in the chapter with Dr. Nancy de Grumman, having received the first award in 2010. And she was one of the people, one of the, professors who, who put your, your honor courts. And as it happens since 2018, the students have chosen two professors to be honored with this truly special awards. And Harrison Betts is a nominator for the first award. Will you please come forward to present the award to Dr. Beth Cogashaw, Professor of Modern Languages and Lingu Linguistics. Harrison? Oh, do you want to say something first about? Oh, you got here. Oh, he's. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm blue grenaders. Let me get And then you can ask, you can continue ask for Dr. Bontail afterwards. Hello, everyone. My name is Harrison. It's nice to meet all of you. Um, the Excellence in Teaching Award is awarded to a Florida State faculty, or in this case, two Florida State faculty members, who demonstrate the award's titular skill. These recipients are chosen by the student board based on their impact on the, and contribution to their students, their department, and FSU as a whole. This year, we honor two very excellent teachers. And our first awardee, who I have the honor of presenting, is Dr. Beth Cogashaw. As I see it, there is a very clear distinction within the quality of teachers. Anyone can teach, far fewer can teach excellently. And while I would argue it is relatively easy to detail exactly what makes for bad teaching, I believe it much more difficult to determine the reverse. How can a teacher be excellent? There is likely no better way to answer this question than by looking to an example. And this evening, I have come prepared with the best exemplar I can think of, Dr. Cogashaw, Assistant Professor of Italian in the Department of Modern Languages and Linguistics. How can a teacher be excellent? To begin, I think one must find the right subject, the things for which they have passion. Good teaching to me takes root in this conviction. And while I do not pretend to speak for her, I very much believe that I see Dr. Cogashaw's passions in the lessons I have had the privilege of taking with her. I have seen how she is stirred by good writing, the craftsmanship of language, the magic sewn into words. 
I have seen how creativity becomes astounding to her, whether it be performed by the authors on her bookshelves or the students in her classrooms. I have seen how firmly she is committed to the practice and to growth, to working through complex questions, to tackling challenges. These passions motivate passionate instruction, deeply concerned with the growth of her learners and the pursuit of knowledge. How can a teacher be excellent? I would argue that to come even slightly close to such an aspiration, one might also invest themselves not only in the education of their students, but in their livelihoods, just as Dr. Kagashal does. In few cases have I seen a college professor so willing to speak with students as people, people who struggle, who experience the twists and turns of life, who need advice and assistance in whatever form it might take. I can attest that any student who has come to Dr. Kagoshal in search of that support has never been turned away. Even I have received the overflowing wealth of encouragement at times when I need it. I think about and often reference a particularly tumultuous moment in my first year when Dr. Kagoshal sent me an email full of resources. That was the subject line, resources. It, and they weren't academic, they weren't professional, they weren't articles for me to read, but they were personal meant to aid me through a tough time and accompany me into the bright future that would follow. How can a teacher be excellent? I think that above all, they can also do so by not only remaining committed to teaching, but to learning, as the provost spoke about. Dr. Kagoshal has clearly done so. In her lessons, she frequently and open acknowledges when she does not know something, and more importantly, when she would like to learn more. As a teacher, she works with her students, accompanying them on the same journey of discovery. I think that if anyone would like to be an excellent teacher, it would serve them well to take as many pages as possible from Dr. Kagoshal's book, perhaps even the whole book. It is a pleasure and honor to present this award to someone who, in my opinion, embodies its spirit in all she does, and to thank you. If you come up. <laughs> Um, and then now, our second award will be presented by our event coordinator, Libby Sauer. <laughs> Come on, Libby. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I'm Libby, and um, today I'll be presenting about Elizabeth, sorry. <laughs> Katie Prantle. Um, so I'm ex excited to in introduce Dr. Prantle. Dr. Prantle is an esteemed educator in Italian studies, serving both as an instructor of Italian and the director of Italian basic language program. She earned her PhD in Italian with a focus of, on romantic, ro on romance linguistics and philology from the University of Wisconsin-Madison in 2017. Dr. Prantle's expertise lies in historical uh, Italo-Romance linguistics and dialectology. Um, I have known Dr. Prantle for several years. I have to say she is one of the most thoughtful people I have ever met. She is a role model to those around her and has been a great mentor to me as I navigate through my life. Katie works tirelessly to help her students learn their best and actually takes the time to get to know them, which I find to be one of the most impactful aspects of learning, building a community. Um, what was it? For example, a student of, her, of hers could say they like reading and then she'll remember that and then try to integrate this into the student's hobby into the learning, making the learning actually like really engaging. And then her presence is frankly a blessing at FSU because, if, when she, because she makes academia and education adjustable. Too often professors can be intimidating in the way they teach, not because they intend to, but simply because they do not understand what it means to convey a topic to beginner. However, Katie goes above and beyond to make sure her students are comfortable and able to make mistakes all while using active, learner-focused techniques. Um, and many people who have had an interest in becoming a teacher and improving th their skills could take a page out of her book. Um, Dr. Prantle's impact as an educator extends far beyond the con confines of the classroom. Her thoughtful approach to teaching, genuine care for her students, and dedication to fostering a supportive learning community set her apart as a true role model and mentor. Through her innovative teaching techniques and unwavering commitment to student success, she not only imparts 
imparts knowledge while also instills a love for learning. Dr. Prantle's presence enriches the academic environment at FSU, making education accessible and enjoyable for all. Indeed, her exemplary teaching practices serve as, as an inspiration for aspiring educators and a testament to the transformative power of passionate teaching. And then <laughs> I'd like to present to you this award. <laughs> Congratulations to both of you. It was hard to hard follow <laughs> to follow what you all said. Where is my? I'm sorry, but things are a little bit out of order here. Yeah. Oh, I'm missing something. I'm sorry, but some it might be. Yeah, but there's more than that. There's another one missing. No, that? Just, just. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but I think that's. Yeah, that's, yeah, run. It had walked out. Okay, thank you. Yeah, yes. Okay. All right. Congratulations to Dr. Kakashal and to, to Dr. Prantil. Yes. Initiates and, and friends, Chief Justice of the United States Supreme Court Charles Evan Hughes spoke these timeless words at the 100th anniversary of Alpha of Rhode Island's Phi Beta Kappa chapter. We have edited Hughes' remarks in two or three places to preserve their context. The particular interest of Phi Beta Kappa is in liberal education. Whatever debate there may be about its exact definition or its prerequisites, liberal education persists as an ideal. Intensive critical study of educational aims and methods has found nothing to take its place. A liberal education means the development by careful training of the capacity to appreciate what has been done and thought, the ability to make worthwhile appraisals of achievements, doctrines, theories, and proposals. It's liberal because it emancipates. It signifies freedom from the tyranny of ignorance and freedom from what is worse, the dominion of folly. Learning is not its aim so much as intelligence served by learning. At this time when the world stands in need of every influence which favors intellectual discipline and achievement, as against the complacent indifference, the service of Phi Beta Kappa is of heightened value. Now let me conclude with a charge from the 1779 Phi Beta Kappa ritual. You all at this moment experience in yourselves the heartfelt satisfaction which I do at this our valuable acquisition. Friendship herself, pleased with her success, now smiles at your addition to our fraternity. The initiates will now rise. In the presence of these members of our fraternity, I declare you members of the Alpha Chapter of Phi Beta Kappa, authorized to wear its key in testimony to your high academic achievement. For that, I congratulate you. And you may be seated again, please. And you're going to talk to me. The ceremony itself is now adjourned. Before the members of the head table and others in regalia process out to take off our regalia in the front room to return to mingle with the all, and we'll leave the extra certificates here in case you need to look for them. I have a request to the new members. I ask that all Phi Beta Kappa members encourage future students to accept their invitation to join. You can contact Dr. Pila and other Phi Beta Kappa faculty and me should you have any questions. And any juniors interested in becoming involved as student officers in Phi Beta Kappa this coming year, you will now hear from our student president, Andrea Lopez. He'll tell you about it. And then please go to our local website and see the emails to contact any faculty and student board members. Again, congratulations. We thank you for coming. And now, after
after Andrea has spoken, please join family and friends in reception here at Miller Hall after we have processed out. Provided by FSU and University Relations. Hi all. Um, last minute note, I know you guys are eager to conclude. Um, but just to reintroduce myself, my name is Andrea Lopez. I am the student president of Phi Beta Kappa, Alpha Chapter Florida. Good afternoon to the executive board, the student board, newest inductees, inductees, family, friends, and the Phi Beta Kappa community. So Annalisa just said I come up and speak to you for a brief moment about PBK, our student board, and what we do. As you've gathered, Phi Beta Kappa is one of the oldest and most prestigious honor societies in the country. We are a membership by invitation only society, so it is a large honor to be sitting where you are sitting now. Congratulations. Please consider this just one of the many indications of your hard work. Like many things, PBK took a severe blow as a result of the pandemic. Students graduated, information was never quite passed on, and t-shirts were locked away in closets that we are just beginning to locate. Despite this dark age, the incredible student board and I have worked these past few semesters to gradually collect materials, information, and means to restore and even surpass the awesome presence Phi Beta Kappa has on FSU's campus. For instance, we're working on monthly general body meetings, lectures given by esteemed speakers, mixers to get to know your fellow members and even the faculty, and movie nights on the green with the SLC, service projects, and other such collaborations with FSU's RSOs and clubs. We'd love to hear whatever ideas you've got, and we'd love to have you serve our organization and community as well. Our current acceptance rate is 23%, meaning a quarter of invitees have accepted the invitation to join Phi Beta Kappa this semester. We realize students receive countless offers to join the many honor societies on campus, and without a strong presence on our campus, PBK becomes simply one of the emails. We'd love to change that, and hopefully you guys can help us out. Since members consist of juniors and seniors, the turnover rate on our student board is unfortunately very quick. For instance, all of us but poor Libby are seniors and are moving on and graduating this May. Thus, we have quite a few positions open on our board, and we eagerly encourage you guys to apply. I'll be handing out flyers with the QR code to our application outside at the end of the ceremony. Thanks again, and congratulations. This is a huge honor. And I'm now going to ask for the music so we can person this out. 